So, austerity is over, if you listen to the Prime Minister and the Chancellor. Now, maybe I'm being cynical, but I have real doubts. Monday's budget felt much more like an election pitch to me. One of those budgets a government produces when it abandons its long-term strategy and instead tries to buy off the electorate. The end of austerity just doesn't ring true, given that we still have an enormous debt, our growth is one of the slowest in Europe, and our productivity levels are pathetically low. I believe people will want to see real improvements in public services and feel personally richer before they are convinced austerity is over. They would want their wages to be back at pre-crisis levels. They would want public services to be significantly better after years of cuts. And they'd want a much greater feeling of optimism in the country. If there is an election in the next 12 months, and I think there's a good chance there will be, despite what the Prime Minister is saying, I don't think the voters will fall for this. Greg, cynical? You? No. Could never, could never happen. No. For viewers who perhaps need a little bit of a reminder of the key measures, let's quickly walk you through what we learned in the budget. The key measures. An extra £20 billion a year for the NHS over the next five years. A £2.7 billion investment in the welfare reform universal credit. A new digital services tax which will raise £400 million from big tech companies. An income tax cut a year ahead of schedule, raising the threshold where you start paying tax to £12,500. And a £30 billion package of investment in England's roads, including for fixing of the potholes. Uh, so coming back to it, yes, I think it probably was. It did have the feel uh, of an election budget. Um, interesting that just, are they actually saying that it is over or, to quote him, austerity is coming to an well, end? She what? said it was over. And, and he, he said, said it's, it's coming to so, an end. And this is the pick that, that my listeners picked up on. Like and she well, she clearly didn't... He clearly didn't like her saying that no. at the Tory party conference because he doesn't think it's, it's true. Not true. So confused.com, I don't know. I've well, got one person who leads the country saying it is over, the other one saying, well, no, we're not there yet. So, but where I think there is a real, real problem, and I think you're absolutely right, and you're right to focus on those folk who are, are on Struggle Street down at the lower end of the scale, this extra money for the universal credit, this, I still sense, is the Conservatives' poll tax. This it could is. backfire it's in exactly the most spectacular yeah, yeah, yeah. style, and you track it back to previous Chancellor George Osborne, who it would appear it would appear, I stress, high-handedly decided to rob, take two to three billion pounds without reference to anyone, and it's meant that it started disastrously, it's been calamitously introduced, it's got a terrible sm sniff of, of disaster and, and, in a way, poor treatment, almost wickedness about it. That's going to be their problem out of this budget. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, the, the, the other interesting yeah. thing, yeah. it seems... People are suffering as a result The other of interesting it. thing, it seems to me, in this whole thing is you go back to when George Osborne first became Chancellor and everything was about reducing the deficit. Everything was yes. about... That's been abandoned. This, I mean, if, if Osborne... Would, if, he, if they were following through Osborne's policy, they would not have put this sort of Definitely. money into, into roads or into the health service. They'd have done it to reduce the... Well, well, the, the deficit reduction plan has, has gone. It's disappeared. I, I, I just want to, I want to agree with you, Greg, and say that actually this looks to me like a smokescreen, um, and especially when you uh, strip it away from the protected areas of the budget. Let's take a look at this graph, uh, because what this graph does, this is total uh, departmental spending, which is set to rise by 2.9% in the next few years. Years. But if you strip out the um, extra money for the National Health Service and other protected areas, which are protected by, of course, law, like defence mm. and foreign aid, the unprotected departments are set to see their budgets cut by 2.9%, mm. which includes, by the way, and you saw the difference here. Now, this includes uh, the key areas of schools, police and prisons. And we all know what's going on with our police, for example. They're unable to even uh, uh, charge or even investigate stabbings and burglaries and violent offences. Uh, they're getting In Instances. We must say in some instances, of course, not at but they're all. also yeah. getting yeah. distracted right, by cases. things like you know non-crime hate yep. speech because right. of the policies yep. that are imposed yep. on them. Meanwhile, real crime is spiraling out of control. Our prisons are are, are in a mess, and of course, uh, the schools where the teachers are underpaid. Can I just add to that the public sector pay freeze? I, I agree with you again. I think mm. that until uh, the average everyday Joe Blogs is feeling that yeah. difference in their pocket, yeah. Yeah. Yes. it's not it's right to yeah. try and bribe the electorate by saying austerity is coming to an end or has okay, ended. Well. Football's coming home, didn't come home. Whichever one you want to say. <laughs> Ultimately, she's trying to bribe us. You remember that speech where she said, if you back me on Brexit, I'll end austerity. That's the biggest bribe I've ever heard. Not sorry, Carol, to bring no, I, just, I, just, I, just don't, I didn't think it was as much an election pitch. I think it was an unashamedly political 
budget to quell the mutiny in the Tory party. There was also the, the threat in there. Philip Hammond can't speak these days without a Brexit threat. It was also a threat to MP saying, you sabotage the Chequers deal and I will not pay this £100 billion giveaway. He's actually said that. So it was a threat to people and that's not the Chancellor's job. His job, Brexit or no Brexit, deal or no deal, his job is to reassure us, the public and businesses, that he will take whatever means necessary. If he sees a black hole, though, to, he's got to say, to make Carol. this country. Well, no, he no does. But, but he does this everything. It's always, there's always a doomsday dividend. But I also think it has a feel that Theresa May, you know, has, has achieved nothing in her two mm. years as Prime Minister, apart from personal survival. And I think this budget is about reminding <laughs> Tory voters what for, because no-one knows what the Tory party's for anymore. It doesn't have a message yeah. anymore. Her dancing's you know, improved. Uh, well, yeah, but, think, but, but it's not good enough to say, vote Tory, you know, to yeah. keep Jezza out. You have to have a, a better reason to the vote The next song she should come out dancing to is I Will Survive. I will survive. <laughs> well, she she has survived, survived and she's survived very but that's, but that's all, because Greg, she, But she I... has now been defined by Brexit. Yeah. Can I bring in a grab from from Paul Johnson, the director of the Institute of Fiscal Studies, who actually delves deeper into this cruel budget. Yes, public spending is rising over the next four or five years for the first time in a while, uh, but nearly all of that money is going to the health service. If you're looking at other bits of public services, whilst the cuts have probably stopped, there's no extra money for anything other than health. Which is a real term cut, and I think actually, aside from the end to austerity. I think we need to see the end to, of this cruel Tory government. P poor people have suffered at that. And it's funny, the other day George Osborne was on another news uh, television show showing no remorse whatsoever and no understanding in terms of how real people have suffered because of his policies. Well, do you remember Theresa May when she made that amazing speech when she was made PM? She said she was going to help the just about managing, yes, she, she was going to help yeah, the people really. left behind. She's done none of that and none I, I that. really think well, this is kind of a pretty desperate time for the Tories well, because, well, because, well, because well, they well, need well, to well, give well, someone... Record well, hang on, record employment figures. No, that's helping. That's, that's, no, no, but not no, stable yeah. work. And, and also, yes. they're not, not all the gig... No, no, that's not wages. Wages are stagnating. No, wages are growing again now. No, we have to have a little bit. Decade, Pro, pro, uh, uh, gross, and gross, this is zero, gross, yeah. zero hours. I'm going to the wrong place with that. Growth's <laughs> growing faster than in Germany now. Record employment figures. All right, some in the so called gig economy, yeah, not all. Yeah. No, I think there is another side to And she could point. win an election. I mean, I'm not saying Only she I just not don't think you can use standing on the horizon. <laughs> I don't think you can use this as, as an argument in the election. I think it'll be forgotten. Which is this but, budget? Yes, yeah. yes, I think it'll be forgotten. So can I ask you a but, she said an end to this Tory government, but I'm wondering the problem is, of course, with Corbyn on the, on the spectrum of the horizon is looming there, so how can there be an end to this government when is, you've got... the thing is, you know, you know I'm not a, a Corbyn fan, but what I would say is for those that are at the bottom of society that are suffering even more at the hands of this Tory government, for them, actually, a Corbyn government would be a much better deal. It has, no. it, 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 but it no, has no, to be no, said, no. June, that by the year... I've got, a, I've got a little bit of an effect here. By 2023-24, the, the efforts of the Tories on power, they're going to be spending £30 billion a year more than they're spending now, which is actually a pretty good thing. But, but, I, but I do but think... But what happens that, in that time but, before we get yeah, I know, there? But, but, and Johnny Mercer, you know, the guy who represents Wales some, somewhere in Wales, he, he said the other week, if he, if he was... Um, <laughs> If it's, he was... it's Plymouth. <laughs> it's Plymouth. It's Wales, Plymouth. No, it's Wales. There's somewhere in Wales, no, Johnny. No, Mercer. it's Plymouth. It's, 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 it's Plymouth in Devon. Yes. Oh, right. <laughs> I do sorry, think Mr. <laughs> Murphy. Okay. Well, so, I think, that guy. Sorry anywhere, to Plymouth. Plymouth, sorry anywhere to Plymouth. west of Brentford. But, yes, it's just Wales. I'm an Northern girl. I don't know. But what he said, I think, makes sense. He said if he wasn't an MP, he wouldn't vote Tory now. Look because at that. he says the Tories have lost their ability to scrap what they believe in. And is it really sensible now to turn on the spending taps at a time? When we have our <coughs> national debt is 1.7 billion, it costs it costs trillion, 1.79 trillion, <laughs> and it and costs. It's only you on and it's oh, of shut some up! Sort. I made a mistake. For God's sake, okay, Plymouth. Sorry, Plymouth. I really am sorry. But Johnny Mercer is a good man. He is. Actually, He's I a like really him. good man. Like when he goes to the right constituency, <laughs> the trouble is he keeps going to Wales. Yes, he spends his life. In Johnny, turn around. Okay. <laughs>